Your early take, Kate, please. Yeah, look, I mean, John, as everyone's been talking about, we have this perfect storm around some clarity around the election and some clarity with a divided government, which I think is actually a great outcome for markets because you don't get any radical policy change in that environment. And the good news coming out of Pfizer this morning um, and leading people to feel more comfortable about the reopening trades. And so I think you have this incredible combination right now of sort of a relief after getting through some of the toughest part of the political cycle and relief that we have an end in sight in terms of the pandemic. Um, but I think both of these things are, you know, not January 2021 phenomena that we actually have to say the market is trading on expectations of mid 2021 at this point, which equity markets, as we know, generally do. They trade for on, on forward news. Um, and we also kind of have to temper our optimism. I expect some of these outperformers to really rip, you know, the reopening trades in particular um, to outperform. You were mentioning the banks a moment ago, but I think also some of the travel and entertainment leisure stocks, I would expect it to perform extremely well today. But sustained outperformance, you know, is going to sort of require even a, a stronger timeline and a kind of a firmer timeline around when regular adults will get the vaccine. Okay, I think this is the most important point to recognize this morning. And I mentioned this at the top of the program. When you see big moves like this, it's really difficult to distinguish between a squeeze because people are caught wrong footed in a different part yeah. of the market or on the wrong side of the trade, so to speak, and something more durable. How do you make that kind of calculation on a morning like this morning, Kate? Yeah, John, that's an incredibly important point. I think positioning has always been a critical part of our process as well, trying to understand not just where people are short, but for institutional investors, where they're underweight. And financials certainly falls into that category. I mean, look, even if we get a reopening of the economy, you know, banks have some challenges from a lower interest rate environment. Uh, the Fed seems very unlikely to change its tune. I mean, Powell was out last week confirming that we are at extremely low levels of rates for the foreseeable future. We are anticipating even more liquidity. So, yes, I see the steepening of the yield curve right now. And, yes, I you know, understand people are more optimistic about a return to regular activity for consumers and for businesses. But, you know, this is more of a uh, adjusting people's underweights, you know, kind of neutralizing what had been a big call to take money out of financials and put it into other uh, secular growth stocks and uh, in less of, a, I think, a constructive view on the overall sector at the moment. Kate, from your perspective, is there a risk that retail investors especially could get a little bit too cute about all of this? And I think for yeah. institutional traders as well. Last week, the conclusion was stay long stocks. This morning, right. the conclusion is stay long stocks. It's just the emphasis that shifts around, the rotation from one place to another. Kate, can you just stay long the S&P 500 and sit out the next few months and not play yeah. this game? Well, I mean, it depends, you know, exactly as you're saying, John, how cute do you want to be? There's definitely going to be some rotation, internal rotation at that over the next couple of days as people, as I was mentioning, uh, reduce their underweights to some of the sectors that I think are a little bit more impaired over the longer term. And you know, maybe take some chips off the table on the higher flyers, the secular growth stocks. But, I, you know, I still want to be in these companies that have generated revenue growth through all parts of the economic cycle. Even if we have a vaccine, even if in early 2021 we're getting closer to another round of stimulus, you know, that you know, we still want to own companies that can prove to sort of uh, produce revenue growth, that can expand their business, that have awesome management teams and super strong balance sheets, um, you know, in the interim. And so I think, you know, we're a long ways from an all clear from a February, you know, 2020 kind of economic and market environment. And until then, yeah. you know, I will be using some of these opportunities if people are rotating out of those stocks to add on to some of my positions.